Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well. Who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear for bearing the sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrew is a life foreigner scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, I'm entitling this epistle. In all things, let the spirit, the right way, not the flesh, the wrong way. All right, because as you know, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he deals with um, he deals with duality and righteousness. Now, this isn't about any bugged out, you know, heathenistic um, philosophy. OK, like um, yin and yang. Now, it may have some similarities, but it's not it's not it's not that per se. OK, because when you get deeper into these heathenistic philosophies, they have a bunch of other little. Um, you know, it's, it's always some form of idolatry mixed into it. Like, you know, it, you get into yin and yang and the balance of everything. But then these heathen will have you going down a rabbit hole of believing that everything is relative. And that's not the case. Everything operates in the will of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah. But the point is, there's a right way to do things and the wrong way to do things within this ministry. All right. And within life in general. So let me go ahead and get this uh, first precept. Um, this is the book of Matthew, chapter five, verse 11. And this is red letter, so it's Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach speaking, whom the word only calls Jesus Christ. And it reads, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. Now let me stop right there and get a point. I'm getting this precept first because Jakes will use this, all right, as an as you know, I, I like to call it, you know, through the spirit, the victim demon, okay? Because Jakes will use this precept. Man, it's a lot here. Jake will use this precept basically to what's the word I want to use? Basically, justify themselves and our Lord as if oh, because people hate me, I'm I'm uh I must be righteous. No, bro, the Heavenly Father deals with balance. Okay, people get hated for being wicked as well as people get hated for being righteous. Now, let me read it again from the top and get the point. Matthew chapter five, verse eleven. Red letter, Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach speaking, and it reads, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. And here's the main point that ties everything together. For my sake. Whose sake? Yahweh Shah's sake. All right, because Yahweh Shah, our beloved Lord and Savior, who comes in the um in the power, okay, of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. He's the one that went on the cross for our sins, okay? He's the one that showed us how to walk in the way that pleases the Heavenly Father. And he's our mediator and high priest and way back to the Heavenly Father. None of us are on the level to call on the Heavenly Father like our forefathers of old did in righteousness anymore. We have to call on the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, in the name of Yahweh Shah, his only begotten son. So realizing this, there's also just like it was before in the first covenant under this grace period, there's still requirements to being an Israelite. You can't just waltz your way in just because you have the blood of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob flowing through you, whether you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter whether you hop in the congregation or whether you uh, are lowly in the congregation. All right. There's a certain way we're supposed to conduct ourselves, man. That's the beauty of the law, statutes and commandments. So it's not about, oh, well, I'm going through this and that. People are saying all types of things about me. That's not true. First and foremost. Be honest about it. Be 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 real. If we were to get into the law, all right, the scriptures, the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, and we were to weigh the matter with the scriptures and righteousness, are all of these things that be, that are being said about you are they all truly false, or is there some truth to it? Are you truly being uh, falsely accused, or have you broken? Have you broken some laws that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai used to have a harsh judgment for under the first covenant? Now, it's not to say the law has been done away with. No. All right. 
is the simple fact of judgment is not executed uh, expediently anymore. Okay, we're not sovereign. We can't just stone Jake or burn Jake at the stake for being wicked niggas. We have to operate in um, the grace of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that the Lord gave Jake a pass to be a wicked nigga. No, it just means that now, okay, you have an opportunity to get your, you know, get your shit together, so to speak. You know, it's not, it's not for you to mess around and twist the scriptures to, don't use the scriptures as a cloak of maliciousness, man. That's, that's, that's wicked, man. That's like, it's bad enough. Like, look at it like this. If you basically... If you basically started a kitchen, if you basically you was uh, cooking some food in um in uh, your father's kitchen, okay, and you started to burn, let's say you you cooking some lamb and you started to burn the lamb, and your father told your big brother to go and check up on you, all right, and if you burning the lamb, if you start a kitchen fire, I tell you how to put it out as soon as possible, and he tells you. Hey, put that put that fire out, and you don't listen, and then the entire flame just starts to, you know, spread from the stove to the uh, the, the kitchen cabinets, you know, and to the rest of the kitchen until it's about to consume the whole house. Then then what good are you? That's wicked. That's why that's why the Lord gets into, um, this this is how you probably use grace, man. You don't sit right there and say, oh man, what did I do wrong? Are you, are you trying to say that I can't cook? Nigga, put the fire out. Lord Yahweh Shah, he not only he not only came to tell us how to put the fire out, he put out the biggest fire for us. Because the Heavenly Father, the scriptures tell it tells you that we would have been uh like unto Sodom and Gomorrah had he not uh, left a small remnant. And most importantly, had he not sent Yahweh Shah as the guide to for that remnant, first and foremost, the entire nation of Israel would have been through. So you can't take that for granted, man. You can't sit right here and follow the example of wicked niggas and just think that, oh, because you're going through something that that means that you're a man of the Lord. That's bugged out, bro. Don't do that. And I'm saying this, you know, through the spirit. It just hopped, you know, through the spirit and probably how bosh me all shy. It, it just came to my mind to uh, do, do this epistle. So people who, who are new to the truth or, you know, Jakes that may have been in for a while who may, you know, struggle with this particular um that particular aspect of their own spirit, that they can realize that, yeah, like no matter what goes down, we have to never forget that it's a it's a gift to be called into this. And yes, the scriptures say that we will judge angels. So how much more the matters that pertain to this life, but in everything we have to do it righteously, man. We are rehearsing the righteous acts. You are not justified because you're suffering. Now, let me go ahead and get that precept. It's, um, Salakia. What is that? Second Timothy, I believe. And it's chapter, is that chapter three? Oh, the water. Yeah, how about me? I'm shy it is. Okay, so this is the book of Second Timothy, chapter three, starting at verse 10, and it reads, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. And whose doctrine, the doctrine that Apostle Paul was preaching, whose doctrine was it? It was the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Reading on. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them, all the Lord delivered me. Okay. Verse tw uh, 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, will suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. All right. So it's important to understand that. Really, 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 really understand that anybody could easily be going through something in this truth. All right. They can be, they, you know, they can be in the midst of getting rebuked and then play the victim. That's happened a lot in Israel. OK. In my very, very minute time in the truth, I've seen it, you know, through video epistles, 
okay, through the videos that certain uh, other camps put up, you know, through videos that Lone Wolf Israelites uh, do where they basically are blatantly going off. And unless, you know, the true men of the Lord see these videos, these uh, offenses, they'll go unchecked. And the next thing you know, you, you basically got somebody poisoning the flock just because they're speaking uh, smooth things or just because they know how to basically uh, play the victim. They know how to misuse scriptures for their own purpose. And that's that's off. And we all sin and fell short of the glory of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. But the purpose is, you know, to understand you have to rightly divide the word of truth, man. It's an honor to be able to call on these names. It's an honor to be able to know for surety that we are the children of Israel. Okay. And we go by the bywords of being the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right. And the speckled bird Hebrews are like foreigners. They have they have to uh go by, you know being looked at as whatever they look like on the outward appearance because of the scattering but even in that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has given us the understanding of realizing these things are all a part of our reproach and as um, uncomfortable as the reproach may be there's still beauty in the fact that with that reproach it still identifies that we are the people both blessing and curse identifies us as the true biblical Hebrew Israelites but we have a, we got a job to do man when Israel used to have that spirit of, oh, well, I'm straight because I did this. I'm straight because I did that with the Heavenly Father. That was when bullshit started to ensue. That was when Jake basically, you know, started to not keep laws. They felt like, oh, I'm keeping this, so I don't got to keep that. And that's when the wickedness started. And like the elders have recently said, you know, um, even once Masha had, um, once he, through the, once through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Masha, Masha had uh, delivered us from the hand of Pharaoh by parting the Red Sea, okay? And we were given the commandments. One of the first commandments that Jake uh, broke was uh, the circumcision. They stopped circumcising their children. Okay. Now, the point of me getting this is Jake has always looked for excuses around doing what the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, commanded them to do. You know, they, they, they agreed to the covenant because of the benefits. But when it came time to, like, really do what the Lord had to say, <clears throat> it's like you. Walking in the flesh, Jake was doing it the wrong way there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it all right when you move in the spirit okay you accept both sides of judgment there's a time to judge and a time to be judged okay as long as we in this flesh there's always going to be that balance and if you're so afraid of rebuke okay learn how to accept it at the ground level before it escalates all right. No one likes being rebuked. We're not saying, oh, yeah, go ahead. And, no, no one's a masochist, man. But the point is, when you have that true guilt, that broken spirit and contrite heart pursuant to the book of uh, Psalms, the 51st chapter, you understand that the Heavenly Father, he's definitely still punishing us less than our, puni you know, less than our iniquities uh, deserve. OK, so you can't ever get too big for your britches where you feel like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to go ahead and make this rebuke video and make it a whole big thing you know a rebuke video it doesn't take long okay the, mo the longest rebuke videos i've seen by men that's been laboring in this doctrine in spirit and in truth has been like an hour and some change those are the ones i can remember off the top of my head you don't need a six hour live stream bro if you're making money that's that's your thing do what you do but you don't need that you did the ministry is not what you use to make your money all right and you definitely don't <laughs> come on now jake will basically deceive themselves by playing with the name of yahweh bash me out shot since when did the heavenly father ever since when was he ever fooled by jake who does jake think they fool him man and how much more in these last days now that yahweh shah has sent us uh the rakhak with dash now that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah sent us down the Rechak with us, the Holy Spirit, so that we can properly judge matters through the Spirit. This is why we don't, to our best, to the best of our ability, we don't lean to our own understanding, man. You can easily mess up. You can prematurely judge the situation and you find yourself saying Salakia, you know, after you done made an ass out of yourself. It, a number of things go, the judgment goes two ways, bro. At every, at every single point, we have to treat the Heavenly Father's word like the two-edged sword that it is. If I handle this sword uh, incorrectly, I can get cut. You can be so pressed to cut somebody. Next thing you know, you fall on your own sword. And that's all I'm getting at with this really is just like, 
You know, whether it be the whole victimhood crap that Jake gets into of, oh, yeah, people are persecuted. Like, bro, just stop. Accept it. Spiritually, when Jake does that, they doing the same thing that Eve does when she didn't have too many. She basically didn't took too many rods, but she's still trying to um, numb the pain by, you know, calling herself a bad bitch and, you know, doing all this other extra, you know, superfluous vain shit. But. When you get to the root of it, it's like, sweetheart, who hurt you? Let it go. And then if if they really were to just stop and accept what's going on, they would probably break down in tears. And that may feel uncomfortable to them, but that's better than the alternative, which is continuing in folly and then being judged by Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. And let me get this other precept right here. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And... verse 40 and it reads let all things be done decently and in order okay so yes there is like even though the heavenly father has given the true men of yahweh uh, um a uh, a very uh i would say illustrious office in these last days you can't let the power go to your head man at every single point you know you have to look at rank and promotion as um as a test it's not just it's not don't look at it as just a reward like the test didn't stop just because you got the uh just because you got an a plus all right there's going to be more tests down the line what well, you know like uh, uh brothers have made the um what i want to say the observation or the um comparison to how this truth can be like when you're in school and you got to take you know quizzes and then you know the thing that's bigger than quizzes is like a test and the other thing that's bigger than that is like, you know, uh, 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 exams and then you got final exams. The final exam for us, you know, gets into the bigger prophecies where Jake's faith is really going to be tested. You know, like, have you been really honoring the names of Yahweh while Yahweh shot? Have you been um, given the diligence to make your calling and election sure? Have you been ensuring have you been ensuring to the best of your ability that you haven't been offending the little ones? OK. And offending goes deeper than just, you know, I said some harsh words to him, you know, because you could be saying harsh words in a situation where this brother needs to be rebuked because he, he's he's been like consistently fucking up, so to speak, because the um, the gentler rebukes haven't been getting through. And now he keeps and now he keeps offending in the same matter and the offense. It, it can get him deleted. So you have to uh, up. You have basically got to like, you know, up the volume, so to speak. But the true offense lies in laying stumbling blocks. It lies in teaching false doctrine, you know, putting that leaven in, in, in Jake's bread. OK, where the bread is supposed to be unleavened. So it's, it's real important to realize don't follow cult of personality, man. In all things, you have to literally really, truly seek your how about shim you shot and truth and sincerity. Let me let me see if I can get that precept. Psalms 25. I think it's verse 14. The Wadi Hell Bash Miao Shah. Um let, let me start at verse 13. And it reads. No, Salaki, verse 12. And it reads, What man is he that feareth the Lord Yahweh Bash Miao Shah? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahushah is with them that fear him, and he will shew them his covenant. Okay? So, right here, you have to understand that part of fearing the Lord is not playing with his name. Okay? Part of the strong delusions that he puts on Jake is when Jake is basically doing what they're doing for filthy lucre's sake, or any any reason you have to be in this truth, if it's not sincere, if it's not because you have a sincere love for Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah outside of what he can do for you, okay, then it, it becomes easy for you to get, you know, you basically start buying your own press and you start, you know, you know, you just start to get arrogant, just to keep it simple. All right. You don't need to be out here believing that, all right. You don't need to be following cult of personality. You don't need to be sitting right here acting like um, your shit don't stink. 
Uh, you don't need to be sitting out here acting like, okay, well, this guy's in the hot seat. You know, so just because somebody's, you know, currently being rebuked today and he's and that person is the hot topic right now, it doesn't mean hop on it and then start, you know, oh, yeah, this and that. Like, if, unless you're one of the men of the Lord that the Lord has chosen to, you know, rebuke and handle the matters and, you know, make sure that the ministry be not blamed, make sure that the flock doesn't get uh, scattered through false doctrine then you really 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 need to focus on examining yourself daily pursuant to the book of second corinthians chapter um 13 in the fifth verse as well as even the um even the men that are doing the judgment even the men that are doing the rebuke okay the lord has chosen those men to do it because he he put the spirit on them to know how to handle judgment you know just like when you when you send soldiers to war what the heavenly what did the heavenly father do in the book of Judges, I believe it's around about the sixth chapter and the seventh chapter, dealing with Gideon. Okay, and Gideon's uh, the, the mighty men that he had of Israel to fight under Gideon. You know, the Heavenly Father, he put them through certain tests so Gideon could see what the Heavenly Father was showing him, which was, you are only going to go to war with circumspect men. So the men that basically got down on their knees and basically drank the water like dogs, you know, versus the men that... Um, you know, put their hand in the water and, you know, drunk the water. and But they were still looking around. They were circumspect. So those circumspect men were the ones you how Bashmiel shot wanted in the war. And those dudes that was lapping their head in the water like like dogs, they weren't circumspect. They were, they were goofy. They didn't understand. Like, look, bro, no matter how thirsty or hungry you, you get, just similar to the Passover, you got to eat and drink in haste. Okay? All right? So you got to understand, and, you know, and spiritually speaking, all right, Jake's that's not circumspect in this truth when it comes to judgment. Those Jake's could be likened unto uh, a soldier. All right, that's gung ho, so quick to cut somebody down. He he didn't go to he didn't go to basic training when it came to the weaponry. All right, he he didn't get into uh, the attack formations. He doesn't understand uh, the signals. You know the signals that signal um, when it's the time to retreat. When is the time to uh, advance? Okay, when to do guerrilla warfare. All right, when to group up in this tactic, when to go, uh, how to um, basically how to go in the camp, how to um, understand the formations of the camp, so forth and so on. All right, Jake guys to understand that at no point in time did the Heavenly Father, at no point in time did the Heavenly Father want you to basically um, get puffed up with the position that you have because it can be taken away. He gives precepts on that. And you shouldn't really relish in judging another Jake because it, it's, everything is a test, man. The angels are always watching and they always reporting back to the Heavenly Father to see who's on point and who's not, you know? Because someone can easily repent, like the Lord said. Um, let me go ahead and get that precept. I think it's in the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. I could be wrong. But let me just type it in so I can get to it. That's a lock here. Multitasking. Uh, there it goes right there. Uh, it's a lock here. I'm trying to maneuver. Uh, How much we push out? Okay, Salakia. Uh, I think that's how you type it. Carlos, thou me good. The Wadi Halbash Shah. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19. And I'm going to start at verse 16. And everyone should know this one by now. It's pretty famous. Uh, the subheading says, the, the rich young ruler. And it reads, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is the, the most high. But if thou will inherit, it's like it, but if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which Yahweh Shai said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. 
Honor thy father and thy mother and love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. Now, something that just came to me right now as I was reading this was um, if you get into thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay. That even gets into claiming that you are a man of the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashmi al Shah. All right. And, you don't, and you're not using those names. If you're not using those names, the heavenly father, he, he hasn't even called you. We don't know who's the chosen until, you know, Lord Yahweh Shah returns and starts, um, starts uh, translating uh, Hebrew Israelites into the chariots. I don't want Yahweh Bashmi al Shah Rath Zawi be those men. But the point is, you, if you. If you're not even calling on the right names, if you haven't been given the right names of your Bosh Shmuel Shah through the Spirit, then you're bearing false witness by claiming that you're a prophet of the Lord. You're a man of the Most High. If you say you're a man of the Most High, Yah, you're bearing false witness. All right, because Yah is not His name. Yah is the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, and when it's used in Hebrew words, Yah simply means He. Okay. So he who like even in the world, you would somebody would be like, oh, yes, yeah, like he who like, oh, yeah, uh, he did such and such. He who he said such and such. He who. Which is why through the spirit, our beloved forefather, Masha, whom the world calls Moses, he asked the heavenly father, you know, when the heavenly father sent him on the mission to get Israel out of Egypt. He said, when I should go into the people, who should I tell them uh, sent me? And then, you know, he basically said, um. He said, basically, uh, he gave, the Heavenly Father gave Masha the name, all right? He said, Ahaya, Ashar, Ahaya, which was the Heavenly Father speaking of himself. Um, I get those mixed up, whether it's uh, third person or first person. Um, I get them mixed up from time to time. So, Salakia. But basically, the Heavenly Father was, re was referring to himself based on the characteristics of his true, proper name, all right? That's why when Moses went, when Masha went to our people, he said, Yahweh which is the proper name of the heavenly father. And I've tried to get this um, metaphor before through the spirit. And basically it's all, it's like this. If, if a king basically sends a servant of his to go and retrieve his goods and tell the person who's holding on to his goods to use the name of that king so he can retrieve those goods because of the power that name holds, because of the reputation behind it, and because just the fear alone will get the results that you need. Then let's say the servant asks, who should I tell them sent me? If this is, if this is the servant's first time actually formally meeting this king and the king tells him, OK, and the king tells him, what's a good name? I'm trying to think of another Hebrew name. If the king tells him the one who is helped of the heavenly father. OK. Then. Um, OK, when you go and you mention the name of that king, you're going to say, let's say, for example, Isaiah sent me because I believe Isaiah means helped of uh, helped of uh, Yahweh, helped of the most high. So that's how that works with Ahaya Shah Ahaya. That's another reason why Ahaya Shah Ahaya is not the true name of the Heavenly Father. It's, it's what he was using to describe himself. Okay. But then he gave Moses the proper name in a less, you know, confusing manner to those who may, you know, be new to that precept. But uh, reading on Matthew chapter 19, verse 19. Um, Honor thy father and thy mother and love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, I have so like you, all these things I have kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Yahweh Shah said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man had heard that saying, he went forth, he, like he, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Verse 23 Then Yahweh Shah said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's like the kingdom of the most high. OK, and I used to get confused on this before I came into the truth when I, you know, when the spirit was on me to kind of read and uh, skim through it. But uh, through the spirit and through the apostles and elders of Great Millstone receiving the uh, correct breakdowns from Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, I understand that what our Lord was basically saying was the reason why it's so difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven is because they get complacent with the, um, the affairs of this life with the, uh, the benefits that they receive pursuant to the book of, I believe second Ezra, the ninth chapter where it says for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. 
So these type of Jakes won't understand. They will read the precepts about how the Heavenly Father is almighty and it's nothing for them to make a rich man poor and a poor man rich, you know. Uh, but they don't really believe it because, you know, if, if you tell Jake to do what Yahweh Shai told the rich young ruler to do, they're going to cry. They're not going to want to follow the Lord. They go, they'd rather walk away in tears showing the in in front of the Lord telling him, I don't want to fight. Like, nah, I like that. Bro, that, that's that's. That's why the beloved Elder Yashua, but through the spirit, he said Jake wants to bring a, an apartment mentality into the kingdom. All right. Like Jake is still thinking small. Jake is still thinking, oh, well, how all of if we are with that dumbass Ron Dalton uh, way of thinking, if all of us, if Israel is like the sand of the sea, how are we all going to fit into Jerusalem? We should go to bro. Shut up. Yeah. How about me? shot. You don't think he thought about all of the intricacies and you know, the logistics of the kingdom of heaven, when the scriptures tell you in the book of second Ezra, it's like a second Esdras, the sixth chapter, I believe it's the sixth chapter. It's like, well, the book of second Ezra where it says Esau at the end of the world and Jacob's the beginning of it that follow with that the heavenly father, he thought of all this stuff before anything was the heavenly father. He created time. He's not subject to time. So before you even, before time was even created, he already knew what he was going to do. How much time does it think? How much time does it take you to to, to uh, concoct a, a master plan as far as making money, so to speak? And when it finally goes through, you can say, "Yeah, man, this took me five years in the making." The heavenly Father is not even subject to time, bro. So he already has it thought out. But Jake needs to realize if you so worried about your following, uh, your, your subscriber count, uh, getting women and all some type of crap on this side more than you worry about the kingdom, you're not gonna make it. Because you're not going to sacrifice the necessary things because at different points of time, your Bosh Mion Shah requires us to, hey, you got to get hey, this girl right here. She's she's, you know, she's wicked. I don't want her around you. Then the Lord will remove her from you or so forth and so on. Or he'll take certain things from you. And if you don't got the right spirit, if you want to start, you know, obeying the Lord less or chasing after these things he removed from you. And that thing is something that Satan uses to sift you out the truth. Then you weren't worthy of him. But Lord, your Shah is about to get another point. All right, because it's balanced. So Matthew chapter 19, verse 25, and it reads, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? But Yahweh Shah beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with the most high, all things are possible. All right. So even though, you know, Jake is going off, you know, whether it be with, you know, adultery and all these other things. Yahweh Bosh Mel Shah is still to be feared because he can jack you up at any given time. All right. But, you know, the Heavenly Father, he also delivers Jake out of reprobate mind states on his own allotted time, so to speak. Like myself, for example, this is why um the apostles and the elders and the Occam of Great Millstone, they get uh they get into mercy. Okay, this is why you know, Elder Apostle Zahar, he uh, he mentions how even amongst IUIC, as much as you may see him do videos about IUIC rebuking Nate, because they are going off clearly by the scriptures. But you never hear the apostles, any of the elder apostles, elder bishops say that, oh, yeah, uh, they're no, they, they, don't, they don't say, oh, yeah, all these niggas uh, are going to basically eat a missile. Nah, they basically will say that there are members of the elect in all of these camps. And even Elder Apostle Zahar, I think um, in his recent cam video, he mentioned that. He mentioned a particular brother of IUIC that seems sincere that actually goes into the scriptures. And those are the type of people that if you how about me all shy, you know, <clears throat> it's like you. If the Lord continues to sup with them, the Lord, he can easily pluck him out of that, uh, that, that congregation of the dead. And he can be in the truth. The, the, the true understanding of you how about me all shy. He can stop calling on these names that offend the Lord. Okay. But the reason why, um, the rebuke has to come is because we don't want Jake. If Jake is of the elect, we don't want Jake to have to suffer like King David did. King David wasn't put to death for his, his sin of um, adultery with Bathsheba. But the punishments, you know, if you had to live through them, you would say in certain instances that they're worse than death. Because remember, when uh, when the beloved prophet Job, he went through his afflictions. He was basically uh, praying to the Heavenly Father that, you know, he, he wasn't born. Job was basically uh, cursing the day that he was born because of how much hell he was catching. So, you know, it's, it, it may seem harsh, but this is how men actually 
uh, love each other. It's not always hunky dory. Hey, bro, let's chill. Let's this. Nah, if Jake fucking up, Jake has to be rebuked because if we didn't love Jake. We would say, oh, nah, forget that dude. Nah, certain times you don't need props. Certain times you may think that shit sweet. You may walk head first into a rebuke, you know, and you got to take that on the chin. You can't be bucking up talking about what you did right. It's not the, the situation is not about what you did right. It's about what you what you're doing wrong. And what can um, lead you to that lake of fire, which is not hellfire with that bugged out Christian doctrine. It's literally America being hit with ICBM nuclear destruction, which is why we pray that we're of the elect and we give diligence to make our calling election sure. How do we do that? Calling on the proper names, uh, emphasizing the importance of the proper names time and 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 time again, because it's not a game. Jake has been put to death over the course of existence for playing with the heavenly father for doing something he told them not to do when the instruction was made clear because he knows your heart the heavenly father he winks at your ignorance if you you know instruction wasn't clear or whatever because he knows all things but if you clearly know those are the jakes that get that get jacked up because the scripture says let me go ahead and get that precept job chapter 4 verse 7 and it reads remember i pray thee whoever perished being innocent or where were the righteous cut off so if jake is out here getting judged in a harsh ass gruesome way it's because that jake was playing with the lord either in this life or in a previous lifetime and jake literally has a, a bad habit of doing that jake has to cut that shit man like it, it, it's <laughs> we are literally this close to jacob's trouble just popping off it can happen any day we're not saying we got the exact time frame because as the scripture says no man knoweth the hour but the heavenly father, because even your shy doesn't know. But you still got to move with that haste every single day, especially when you open up these scriptures and you teaching the Lord's flock. Or even if you not open up the scripture, you're just speaking to somebody. You got to make sure that you speak properly according to what your Hawabash Shai actually represents, because you represent him when you um, when you uh, do these things, when you speak as a prophet. Or you claiming to be a teacher of Israel, you have to know what you're talking about. Let me see if I can get that precept because the apostle noticed, I think Apostle Gabar brought that up um, recently. Let me see if I can get that. Con, this is the book of Job, chapter 42, verse 7, and it reads And it was so that after Yahweh had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah said unto Eliphaz the team and I, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, seven being complete. And in this case, they he actually did have to get, you know, seven literal uh, bullocks and rams within the uh, actual, like if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but it's still also beautiful because seven always represents completion. All right. And go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For him, I so like it, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, and that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So this is a precept that Jake has to really, really take into account if you claim to be a, a preacher or a teacher in Israel. That most high y'all bullshit, cut it. Cut it. Because look, it's, gru it's gruesome. It's, it's desensitizing your how Bashmi Shah made us to these judgments where we don't um we don't lose our minds like most Jake will, you know. We still have compassion on our people, man, because the Lord has compassion on you. But if you don't listen within if you don't get right within the allotted time, then you're gonna be through. Because we don't want to see Jake out here toe, toe up, basically like toe down from the flow down. We basically say what needs to be said according to the scriptures. So as much as it may hurt your ego, look, that most high y'all bullshit is, is through. Anything that's not your how about Shmi Al Shai as far as the names of the Heavenly Father's only begotten son are concerned is through. Most high in Christ blessed, through. Uh, uh, What's the other one? Ahaya Shah Hyatt, through. God and Jesus, through. Jehovah, through. Yahuwah through Yahweh through it's Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai and when you hear those names you should feel completed as if you finally found the missing piece of your puzzle because ever since I can say even ever since a kid I used to wonder what the true name of the Heavenly Father was when it came to Christianity I, I used to wonder that's why you know 
on top of me being raised in a, a, a household that was, you know, Muslim, I never really liked Christianity the way they presented the Bible. But that shows you that's that's the wickedness, man. That's the duality. And you owe it to your how about me shot to seek him to have, you know, have enough faith and meekness and pray that he made you of his of his elect. And he pulls you out of these type of the, the, the folly. Now, let me get a precept right here from one of the. Um, right here, it's in the New Testament, I believe it's James chapter three, verse one. And it reads, and this ties into Job, um, the 47th chapter and the seventh verse, starting at the seventh verse, the verse I just got. And it reads, James chapter three, verse one. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. OK, so that means don't be so pressed to be a teacher and you don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. That's why I liken this unto uh, a Jake that's so battle hungry and gung ho to, to cut something, to cut something down. He ends up cutting his damn self down in a very unceremonious and ridiculous way. All right. And this, both both accounts get into having humility, really examining yourself. Because there's certain things you just won't do if your how about me on shot is truly dealing with you. And if you do mess up on certain things and you truly sincere, then that's where um, the Lord will have mercy on you. For, uh, second Corinthians chapter 13, verse five, and it reads, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How you how to slack you. I'm getting tongue tied. I'm moving too fast. How that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. OK, let's get that word uh, reprobate. Reprobate, reprobate, right here. Strong's G96, Adakimas. All right, Adakimas. Outline of biblical use is not standing the test, not approved, properly used of metals and coins. That which does not prove itself, such as it ought, unfit for, unproved, spurious, reprobate. So for Jake, to liken uh, definition three unto a Jake, when it says that which does not prove itself such as it ought. Jake is supposed to be serving your Bosh Meow Shai. In truth and sincerity, which includes calling on the actual names. So a Jake that's not doing that is like a bird that's trying to be a whale. You off. Let me see something. Whole duty. The Wadi Bosh Meow Shai. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12, verse 13, and it, read, let, so like it, and it reads, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the most high and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. How did he prove our forefather Abraham? Abraham had the name, the true name of the heavenly father. But Abraham had to show the faith that he had in that name by his works so that that name could be glorified. And people can understand the severity of that name and how it's not to be played with through the, through the works of our righteous forefathers like Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. Masha, uh, Aaron, Phineas. OK, Joshua, Caleb. Her of the tribe of Judah. King David, King Solomon. And those mighty men. The name of the Heavenly Father was was taken seriously, even among the heathen. You can't play around with that y'all bull crap, bro. Like you, we we are on no level to call on the heavenly father without Yahweh Shai, let alone try to use a portion of his name. Like you're not going to get your prayers answered. And don't let the, the, the scriptures trip you up when you see uh, Jah by itself. The heavenly father's proper name is Yahweh. All right. No matter what these Amalekites got you doing, you on, no one is on any level to be shortening his name. You know, like they're his equal or something. No, don't do that. Let me see if I can get right here. So back to a Adakimas, not standing the test, not approved. Once again, our forefather Abraham proved himself by works. He had faith in the name of Yahweh Bashmi al to the point where he left his father's house and dwelt in a strange land just off of faith. And come to find out, Yahweh Bashmi al he planned for, for our forefather Abraham, his son Isaac, and his son Jacob to inherit that same land that our forefather was a stranger in pursuant to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And that's the beauty of our Lord, man. We don't. We can't take that for granted. We really can't. We're not on the level, bro. And through Yahweh Shah, we have a chance at pleasing the Lord. 
So don't take the breath in your lungs for granted. The Lord can snatch that out your body quicker than you can make another off video. Quicker than you can sit right here and say, yeah. Stop playing with the Lord's name. No one is exempt from that. This is not about clout chasing. This is not about none of that. This is why you don't see the apostles and the elders and the sincere Akimon down and those who teach the likewise doctrine doing the most with flashy ass promotions and oh I'm doing this I'm going I'm live this and like bro no all these animations and all this extra music and all this other bull crap this theatrical weirdo shit and it's weirdo because it's strange to you how about me shot in our culture we don't we're not there's a way to be flashy in righteousness and there's a way not to be flashy all right it's a wicked way to do it you don't need to basically be all extra flashy especially when you're not preaching the proper names can't explain. I can't express how dangerous that is when Jake does that. And let me see if I can get this precept. Sometimes I, uh, I always kind of get this one. I always kind of forget the exact book that it comes in. Work is. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13. What's the lucky before I get that? Let me go here. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. And then after these uh, precepts, I'm going to close out. Um, now, this is a great commandment right here. This is not to be taken lightly. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse one, and it reads, now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments, which Yahweh Elohaika commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land where the ego to possess it. And whether we're in that land or not, we're supposed to praise Yahweh Bashmi al Shah. So don't let that trip you up. But especially when in, while we're in that land, you know, verse two, that, that thou mightest fear Yahweh Elohaika to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life. And that thy days may be prolonged. Verse 3 Hear therefore, O Yasha Allah, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that <clears throat> so like it, and that ye may increase mightily, as Yahweh Allah of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. And here's the point, verse 4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord Yahweh Allah is one Lord. Okay? So Shema Yasha Allah, Yahweh Allah Yahweh Achad. He's one. There's no God beside him. There is no other way to come to him except by calling on the name of his only begotten son. Who sent their only begotten son to die for the sins of the chosen nation on the planet Earth? Yahweh did that. Not Yah, not Yahweh, not Yahuwah. No, don't do that. It's Yahweh. And he sent Yahweh Shai, not Yahu, not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Yahshua, Hamashiach, the Christ. None of that weirdo stuff. Yahweh Shai. Verse 5, and thou shalt love Yahweh Allah with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, which means your mind. Verse 7, and thou shalt diligently, so like, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. So every single moment, man, this is why. The book of Psalms, the first chapter tells you, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor, sit, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, Salakia. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's why it says that. It's beautiful how the scriptures just tie together. This is why we need to cleave more to it and stop taking things for granted. So this word diligently, is this the word for diligently? Come on, so it's the Hebrew word uh, shanan. Outline of biblical uses to sharpen, wet, to wet, sharpen, to teach, sharpen, to be pierced. Okay. Teach diligently. So this is something that we have to really always have in our spirit. More, first and foremost, that way, even if you do want to start a little YouTube, such, such, whatever the hell it, is, it may be, then whether it happens, whether it doesn't happen, you'll know that that's of your how about me. I was shy and you'll know why he let it happen or why he didn't let it happen. All right. But the names is not to be played with, and you're not supposed to make merchandise of the truth. Now, let me get back to Romans. Uh, 
Romans chapter 13, verse 8, and it reads, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. This is it's not that weird old Edomite version of love where you walk up to a stranger, I love you, brother. No, this is you love your brother according to the law, statutes, commandments of your how about me out shy. Because every other philosophy, every other vain thought that comes in your head, all right, it's gonna lead to folly. All right, this is why we have different movements with uh Jake quote, quote unquote, yeah, I love my I love my bros, but you're doing all types of wicked crap to him because you don't fear the Lord. Verse 9, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any commandment, so can, if, if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. So I can nearer than when we believed. All right. Let me see. Greatest. So this once again, man. Love worketh no ill towards towards his neighbor. So if you knew the if you knew the true names that can get your people saved from a a, a, a terrible destruction. Would you teach them those names that would save them with all diligence, would, as well as teach it to your children and those you love, that you're commanded to teach it to? Not the entire, not not the entirety of the all nations on the planet. Do it exactly the way you're told to do. So like, and teach what you're told to teach. Or would you sit right here playing around, seeking vain glory, talking about I exposed all of them. It's not about which is you didn't do anything. Yeah, how about Shmuel Shah is the one doing all these things? This is why through the spirit, Akim try their best to make sure to remind themselves, you know, it's all of your how about Shmuel Shah. We're just vessels. I think Lord Yahweh Shah also said it. I'm trying to find the exact precept. Um, Salakia, give me one moment. Oh, the Wadi Halbash Miao Shah. The book of Matthew chapter 12. Uh, Salakia. Matthew chapter 12. And it's verse. Verse 30. I'm trying to see was it more, but it's not. Salakia, verse 29. And it reads, And Yahweh Shah answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one Lord. Shema Yasha Allah Yahweh Allah Hayanawa Yahweh Achad. Verse 30. And thou shalt love Yahweh Allah Hayaka with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely, this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other greater commandment than these. Amen. So this is letting you know that if you love Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, this is, once again, the power of the name of our Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. Just by loving the Lord, the Spirit gets put on you to love everybody else around you in our nation appropriately. You'll do everything that the Lord has you to do where you love them, and you won't offend in that matter. The proper love, which is you're teaching them the right doctrine. You're uh, walking in a way, you are conducting yourself in a way where it's... um. It's um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's strengthening for uh, your brothers and your, uh, you know, those around you in the congregation to be around you. It's strengthening for your women to be around you, your family to be around you, as opposed to the toxic uh, spirit that most Jake carry, like the two third Jake in the world or, the, you know, the, the vain talkers and false prophets and false teachers that's in Israel of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped. All right. This is why it's important to realize that. You have to really, really, when you judging and rebuking, you have to go about it in a way where. And this and I'm learning this as I go along, I don't even like doing, you know, like the blood brother Chapala 12 said, it's not even a, a desire to do rebuke videos and those. And that also helps you how about me out shy guide you in the right path, walking in the spirit while you do it. So you don't get vain and puffed up like, oh, yeah, you did a good job of rebuking him. It's not about me. It's, it's you how about me out shy's will. Because if it wasn't for um, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah putting the spirit on um, his true prophets and teachers and apostles, all right, and, and those that they taught, 
Okay, the the God, the true gospel wouldn't have been spread, and individuals like myself wouldn't even have been part of many are called. Okay, many are called, but few are chosen. So if you call, you owe it to your boss me out shy to give that diligence to make your call an election sure. And there's a lot that goes into it, but through your Howard shot, it will get done. All right. But that's all I have for this epistle through the spirit. Hopefully this lesson was edifying to the elected the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elected the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Cha, Kodash, double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere argument of great millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear forbearance and sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elected the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among their number, which are the Hebrews like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and the Baba Ball. We're almost out of here. I don't want what this are, and we got next. Shema Yasha Allah Yahweh Allah Hayanawa Yahweh Achad Shalom.